What is up, y'all? What's up, man? It's the next day. It is Saturday, 6.02 p.m. So, I'm waiting on Lindsay to walk in so we can go train. Um, so, in the meantime, I'm going to eat my pre-workout meal, which is going to be 99% um, lean ground turkey with asparagus. Whew! Boy's feeling it today. Your boy is feeling it. As I said before, it's still salt in my food, you know what I mean? Uh, salt's been in the whole time and it's going to stay in. No crazy changes there. It's gonna help me get the little bit of pump I can hopefully get. I hope my, my, my I hope I can't fucking talk. I hope to God I can get one. And then this regular sriracha sauce, you know what I'm saying? Um, give a little bit of kick. Fuck. I'm ready for this shit to be done, man. Oh my god. But anyway, um, yeah, so I'm gonna talk to y'all at the end of this video. Stay tuned. But I'm gonna kinda go over some things that I've been through in prep. Um, and pro people probably think I'm a fucking crybaby or some shit or fucking complain about all fucking shit, but. I was debating on whether or not I was going to really tell people about it because I don't want to seem like one of those people who try to make excuses for shit, but fuck it. This is my channel, and my channel is about transparency, the good and bad and the ugly of, um, you know, fitness, bodybuilding, etc., mental health, so I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one with y'all a little bit later, and I'm going to let y'all know my mind stayed through this prep, shit just happened, etc., so stay tuned. I'm gonna obviously get some footage at the gym or whatever, and uh, then we'll do some posing probably. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool, man. So next clip. Every day is important. When you walk into the gym, how far are you going to push yourself? To the fucking limits. I'm pushing myself to the fucking limit every single day. I want every workout to fucking count, but I want it to be fucking great. I want it to have purpose. I want it to have fucking meaning. You say that you can't do this, or you can't do that. Well, fuck yeah, that's part of this. That's why this shit's hard. That's why this is difficult. You can't train like a fucking pussy. This is bodybuilding. This is weight training. This is why we all love it. Because it's really fucking hard. I want the best out of me every motherfucking day. Because if you get the best out of yourself every fucking day, you're going to be a hard motherfucker to stop. Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't not be prepared. Because if you're not prepared, then you're not gonna get there. That's how this works. Understand that nobody's gonna do the work for you. There's no easy way out of this, and you're gonna have to do the work in order to look a certain way. You know, all this is, that's what makes bodybuilding so much fucking fun because it is very difficult. Getting uncomfortable every day. Whatever it takes, do not make excuses. It's you. It's you against the world. It's you against that big goal. It's you and your dream. Easy is an illusion. 
Easy is for pussies. Easy is for the guy that is afraid to fail. How tough are you? How much can you take and keep going? Don't be afraid of losing. Be afraid of not giving everything you got. When you get knocked to the ground, you can choose to stay down there. You have the choice to fight. You have the choice to quit. All right, so we are back. Got done with the workout. And I came to Michelle's gym because I wanted to see her and so she take a look at me and stuff, even though I'm gonna see her tomorrow, but anyway. And she's like making me pose, even though I don't pose for two and a half hours already today. And I'm cramping bad, like Charlie Horse in my neck cramping. But you know, whatever, it is what it is. So I'm gonna get it done. I'm not doing my posing routine because it's bad luck. But I'm gonna hit a couple poses maybe, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, I've never posed as much in my life. So, y'all, keep me in y'all's uh, prayers. All right, so I'm here eating the last meal of the day. This is seven ounces of cod because at the store they ran a fucking tilapia. Which I'm a little upset about that, but whatever. And roughly 100 uh, grams of asparagus um so and i got about half a gallon of water left out of my three gallons oh shit it's fucking zoomed in accidentally so what are you eating what is it? you need that what? is ground turkey and brown rice what percentage of fat for the ground turkey mm -hmm. this one is actually 93 because they did not have 99 percent mm. mm. it's a fail it's a big fail but did you wait did I weigh it? No. No, I don't weigh my stuff. <laughs> God. Anyway, we're about to um, eat this, and I'm going to fucking guzzle this damn water and be pissing all night. And, uh, yeah, watch a movie, hopefully, and then it'll be a wrap for the night. And then stay tuned for basically what this video is really supposed to be about. So, we're going to get into it. The, the, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know what I mean? Transparency. All that shit, so stay tuned for that. I know y'all want to see that. Y'all know how I get down. I hold no punches. So I'll see y'all in this clip. Okay, I'm going to try to make this as short as possible. Um, it's a lot of shit. And I, this is something I usually don't do, which is I wrote, wrote everything down to my knowledge because this is so much shit. Um, but there's a lot of shit that's happened in this prep, and... The reason why, like, if those of you follow me on social media, I keep posting things like, it doesn't matter the outcome, I'm, to me it's a win for me to make it to stay on the stage. It's for a reason. Obviously I want to win, obviously I'm gonna, I'm bringing my best, obviously I'm gonna fight, you know what I'm saying, to get that win. However, you have to understand some of the things that I've been through, I don't even, still to this day I don't know how I made it. You know what I'm saying, I really don't. So I'm going to kind of go over it and kind of give a brief high-level overview of the events that took place. So near the beginning of prep, well, probably, well, I think it was like a month, maybe two months ago, a month and a half, um, I lost my car because I went, I lost my job getting ready for Kentucky Muscle in April. And right before the show, I lost my job. So then I went from then all the way into maybe a month and a half ago without a job. So obviously your bills don't stop, right? Obviously, you know, car payments don't stop, right? So they accumulated and, you know, to the point that one day I walked outside and my shit went there. And, I, and like, for those of you who don't know, like, 
in prep, you need to stay calm. If you don't, it'll spike your cortisol levels, which will cause you to retain water. So your stress and everything you want to try to mitigate. You want to try to control all variables if possible. Obviously, it's impossible, but to the best of your ability. Um, cause everybody goes through shit in prep, right? But fucking me, this prep is crazy. So that happens. So now I'm fucking like, not only am I tripping about not being able to do the show in my mind at this point, but I'm like, how am I going to, I had just got a job, but I was waiting to start. Like, how am I going to get to, you know, work? Because I was supposed to start work that Monday, and it was Friday when this happened. So I'm like all fucked up and shit, and then I call my mom. She's like, oh, well, you can use my car. You know, she I've explained this before in another video, but... She has lupus, so she doesn't really get around that much. So to make a long story short, she lets me borrow her car, right? So then I'm like, fuck it. You know what? I'm back on. Now, between that, that first that 12 hours of me, you know, losing my car to me getting my mom's car, I door dashed the shit out of fuck. I, I probably door dashed maybe six or seven different places or some shit. Like, it was crazy. Like, I was, I was like, fuck it. The show's done, whatever. I lost weight. I didn't even fucking gain weight. It was crazy. But anyway, so that happened. And then I had my, I had my mom's car for maybe a day. And I went to Louisville, Kentucky to go work out at the gym. And, uh, you know, we have toll bridges where I'm at now. So me not realizing I'm in my mom's car instead of my car, like it's not computing. There's a charge that went to my dad's account because her car's on his account. So my dad is just on 10 all the time. He, he fucking makes something this big, like this fucking big. It's been my whole fucking life. It's reason why, part of the reason why we don't get along. So he tells my mom, or speaks through my mom, like he typically does. And my mom's like, you know, your dad is pretty upset. Da, da, da. Like the charge is like 4 or $5 some shit. I'm like, my bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I won't fucking do it again. So a situation came up where... I had to do something for work. I can't remember what it was, but I had to go over there. And that was the quickest route and the only way. So I fucking went over there and crossed the toll bridge. I called my, or I text my mom ahead of time. Like, look, this is what's about to happen. Tell dad I, I'll pay him. Like, it's not that deep. So I'm at work at this point and I get a call from my dad. Now, but mind you, my dad's maybe called me four times in my entire life. So I'm like, what the fuck? So then, like, it went to, you know, he stopped calling. I was in a meeting. So then I get off work, and he calls me again. And he's like, bring the fucking car back now. Now, this is maybe two days away from where I'm getting my car back. And I'm just like, what? So after he says that, he says, bring the fucking car back now. He hangs the phone up on me. So I call my mom back, and I'm just like, mom, what the fuck is going on? And she's like, He's like uh, all hooting and hollering in the background, like whatever, and this and that. And make a long story short, like he basically said, if I ever go through any hard times again, like we're never going to help, him, you know, me and all this shit like that. And now, by mind you, on the deed to my mom's house, is left in my name and her name by her godmother. So technically, I could, that's a different story for a different day. But just know that my dad cannot, you know, if some, God forbid something happened, that's always my house and I always have a place to go, I always have a place to live. My mom's godmother made sure of that. So let's take inventory. So I lost my car, right? Basically lost my dad because that was the last straw for me. And I said, fuck him and everybody looks like him. Um, so that, that was that, right? So now I'm about to lose my apartment too. So where I live, like they give you a week of um, like a, a grace period. After a week, you get eviction notice right off top. So then that was on my plate. Then, you know, I finally start getting paid, you know what I'm saying? I get my car back, get my apartment caught up, you know, um, but then, like, you know, everything is going good, but for some reason, my weight gets stagnant. So now that my weight is stagnant, I'm kind of, like, trying to figure out what's going on, right? Stress is not that high. Um, everything is fine. You know, I'm doing, sticking to my plan my coach gave me, and I'm just not, and I can tell this by knowing my body. That's another thing. This is a key reason why you should get to know your body and not solely rely on the coach. So I'm looking at my check-in pictures and I'm like, I'm holding fucking water. Now I'm pretty much keto at this point. So my coach is like, you know, these, this diet doesn't hold water. He's like, you still got fat on you, bro. I'm like, nah, nah, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like I know my fucking body. So, you know, this kind of goes back for a week, back and forth or whatever until it comes to a point where I'm, 
So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to diagnose this shit myself. Like, I'm going to start, you know, ruling things out. Ruled everything out except my anti-estrogen blocker, which I'll get into the science behind that in another video. But just know that if you don't have a good AI, it could cause you to retain water. Um, so I'm like, that's got to be it. But, you know, my coach was like, well, you know, I checked in one more time. He, well, actually, I said that. And he's kind of like, well, we can't tell because we can't get your blood work done. And that was the end of that conversation. I'm like, okay. So then after that, um, about a week goes by, sending more check-in pictures. And then I get um, a video, not a video, a um, voice message. Thank you, fuck. A voice message from basically saying that, you know, my body's not, not responding anymore. And that he doesn't know if I can be, you know, make it or be 100%. And... Maybe it is the AIs and all this. And I'm just kind of like, what the fuck? So I had to basically give him a motivational speech. I'm like, listen, I'm going to do this shit. I'm going to bring my best. I'm going to bring my best look. Uh, I've, I've already ordered some things that help, uh, you know, remedy the situation at hand. And I do know that it is water and I am holding water. So make a long story short. He's like, man, sorry, bro. Like, you're right. Let's do this. Da -da -da, whoop -de whoop So now I done got him back in the saddle. Meanwhile, I'm dealing with all the rest of this shit in my life. So I'm bringing, now I'm bringing my coach back into the saddle. So then we had a conversation. Everything was good. And then um, we got that rectified. And guess what? Your boy started getting fucking shredded. So that's a valuable lesson. Make sure that you know your fucking body and make sure that you communicate that to your coach. If something doesn't sound right or feel right and you cannot... Um, it doesn't resonate with you, say something. Speak the fuck up. But in order to do that, you have to know your body. So don't just be somebody who's mindless and brainless and just letting somebody direct them and you don't know what the fuck is going on. Ask questions. Question everything. So to make a long story short, that's a synopsis, a high-level overview, trying to be as you know quick as possible, efficient with time, of what the fuck has happened this prep. Now, obviously, there's some other things that happened that I, really, I don't really care to discuss, like with my daughter and not being able to see her and her mom acting and whatever. Um, I might get into that in another video, but that's a whole situation in itself. But that did happen in the midst of all this bullshit. So basically, the odds were against me. The universe was against me. Um, everybody, you know, I had people saying that I'm not going to be ready. You shouldn't do it. Your body's being stubborn, all this. And I not only persevered through that, you know what I'm saying? I said, fuck everything, I'm going to finish. Regardless of what I look like, I'm going to fucking finish. And here I am. That's the reason why I'm saying I've already won. There's only been two people in my freaking life right now who has held me accountable and has been there to be a shoulder to cry on and to help me get past some of these hard times and to make me the king that I am in the midst of adversity and that's my girlfriend and my best friend. That is it. If people take that shit personally, then maybe it's meant to be taken personally. But without them, this would not be possible. Without my mentality, this would not be possible. Because every fucking person gave up on me, except for me and my team. So that's the reason why I, I Hall of Fame them. You know, um, I love them. I, I, I praise them. And win, lose, or draw, this is going to be one of the best showings of my entire life because they know what the fuck I've been through. They've been on my side. They've never given up on me, even when I wanted to give up on myself. So we're going to celebrate, you know what I'm saying, win, lose, or draw, regardless of what the outcome may fucking be. And that's the honest fucking truth of what happened in my prep. So... I guess was, uh, the takeaway from that is you have to protect your dream, right, at all costs. Real G's move in silence. Don't tell people what you're going to do. Let them see what you've done. People will talk shit about you because you have potential. People will talk shit about you because you're doing the right fucking things. You know what I mean? So, like, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, put your head down and fucking work and grind. And let your physique do the fucking talking. Because, like I said before... And people think that I'm too mod or I'm too fucking uh, humble. Well, guess what? I've never lost my class in a show before, right? I've won two overalls locally. 
put my name up there with the best of them. And that's just what it is. It's not me being cocky. It's just me putting, stating facts and stats and that's it. You know what I mean? So, people around here, they might get Hall of Fame. They might, you know what I'm saying, get pushed to the forefront when they don't even really look like that. Well, meanwhile, I still got the biggest chip on my shoulder like I did the first day I got into this shit when I was 100 and motherfucking 27 pounds, right? So that hunger has never left me. It's never going to leave me. I don't need any handouts. I don't need people to feel sorry for me. I don't need people to hold my hand. I need people to keep hating on me so I can fuel the flame that's always been burning with inside me, right? That's what makes me a king. That's what makes me justified. And that's what makes me... You know what I'm saying? Hungrier than ever. And that's the reason why I'm going to bring my best look when it comes to the fucking stage. Because Diamond's a man under pressure. And that's what this whole prep has fucking been for me. So with that being said, like I always fucking say, Team Underdog, Team Transcend Your Kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Look around at your kingdom. Make sure you uplift them. Make sure you Hall of Fame them. And make sure, most importantly, that you transcend your motherfucking kingdom. Peace.